I am uh, Luca Cerezoli. I'm talking about how to keep your Yocto setup and your layer simple and how to achieve that. Uh, so I work at Bootlin. We provide services about uh, embedded Linux uh, in, in many uh, areas, especially on uh, BSP development, kernel device drivers, uh, Yocto and build root integration, and so on. Uh, we also provide services, including, uh, sorry, training services, uh, including a Yocto training, which I am teaching as well. Um, I live in Bergamo, Italy. And, uh, well, the talk today is inspired by the fact that, as everybody knows, uh, with great power comes great responsibility. And uh, the BitBake, Open Embedded Core, and the whole uh, Yocto Core um, components are very powerful. Uh, so they are very flexible in, uh, for example, layers, uh, using layers, BB Appends, overrides, and other tools allowing to modify and tweak the build system behavior. This is, of course, very useful. Uh, this is a big feature, but it's also open to misuse. So. Um, when people need to implement something, uh, there are usually many ways to do that. Uh, some are correct, some are wrong, some are subtly wrong. And finding the correct one is not always easy. Uh, copying code from the internet is usually not a good idea. Uh, looking at the uh, official documentation is usually way better. Uh, but still, uh, learning and experience is required. Uh, and not everybody has that, especially uh, for beginners. And so, uh, we, we, uh, with our customers, we experienced several situations where uh, they uh, had a very complex setup uh, creating problems and they didn't understand why. Uh, so I would like to present a real world example. It's just an example to give you an idea. Uh, so uh, a customer came to us about one year ago uh, with their Yocto setup, uh, which was uh, giving several problems. They had 20 layers uh, enabled, including two layers of their own, uh, two from the system on chip vendor, two from the system on module, and uh, many others, including Meta MinGW. Nobody really knew why. Uh, they also had, as a bonus, an additional Git repository just for the Git repo manifest. So overall, it was a very complex setup. Uh, in their BB append file, not counting in the one in the core layers. They had more than 4,000 lines, mostly needed, sometimes creating problems, especially when multiple layers were having BB appends on the same recipe. Uh, so time was spent in discovering the reason for several issues. Uh, it was clearly not an optimal situation. And also they are set up uh, as of one year ago. It was based on Yocto Sumo, which got released four years before. Uh, it was out of uh, support. Uh, it didn't build on recent distro unless you use a container. So it had some custom scripts to set everything up, uh, which can be pretty fragile. And the uh, uh, system of module vendor layer was forcing a, well, was defaulting to a 4.9 kernel, which was six years old already and almost end of life. And for the re this reason, they had to add Linux backports to have drivers. Um, and also they needed to copy uh, and adapt recipes from more recent uh, um, versions of, Li of Yocto to have uh, recipes that were not available in Sumo. Uh, so overall, it was uh, very complex. They tried to upgrade, but uh, things get broken while well, trying to upgrade. Uh, and it was hard to, to figure out what to do. Uh, and all of this was to implement only one single product, and which was not even uh, one of the most complex one around. So that was clearly uh, not a good setup. So the solution we proposed and we implemented was to just uh, uh, ditch everything and write a new setup from scratch. Uh, be, we did that based on the latest Yocto Kirkstone, which is still to, today the, the latest LTS, and um, using third-party layers only if they were really uh, useful and uh, providing advantage um, and not unconditionally. Uh, and also to use mainline Linux and U-Boot because the product was based on IMX6, which is very well supported uh, since quite some time in Linux and U-Boot being a uh, relatively old platform. Um, uh, and also to send to mainline any additional patches needed for uh, some components, which are is in progress actually. So uh, the result is uh, we have now five layers, 
including MetaRock, which is a new thing we added uh, in the process, and one single layer of uh, or their own, uh, which is pretty simple. It has 60 files, 3,000 lines, including their own patches, their own specific stuff. Uh, there is a, a recipe to build mainline Linux, one to build mainline U-Boot, one to build their own product device tree. Uh, they are all very simple recipes based on uh, kernel BB class, the uboot.ing for Open Embedded Core, and from the device tree BB class. So almost everything is already there in Open Embedded Core. You just need to use it and put your own salt in your recipe. Uh, the resulting image size is less than half of the initial image, uh, being uh, uh, just as functional. Uh, there is only one Git repository, which is including a cast config file to download the external components. It is very quick and easy to set up with a couple commands without any custom scripts, which is uh, potentially fragile. And uh, it builds without containers on any modern distribution. Of course, you can use uh, containers when they are useful, but it's not mandatory. And bottom line, the customer is happy with the new setup. So, well, this is great, fantastic. Uh, if maybe you're wondering uh, how you can do that, well, uh, let me show you. Uh, based on uh, these uh, and many experiences like this, we uh, decided to write a, a new repository containing a fictitious but realistic Yocto open embedded setup for a product company. Um, so this is meant to act as an example uh, repository for companies making their own products using Yocto and um, to, to take inspiration and uh, have an idea of how things can be done cleanly. Uh, so it is not an example of a BSP or distro or software layer. Uh, this is out of scope. Um, so this repository is meant to be clean, obviously, as I said. Uh, so there is only one layer two products, fictitious product, but uh, still uh, working on real boards, uh, one distro, configuration, and a few recipes to build mainline Linux and new boot, a user space application, and also an image recipe. Uh, and there are two BB append files to fix uh, recipes from other layers. Um, so as I said, the goal is to provide a practical example on how you can achieve uh, common goals uh, from fetching the layers to writing clean recipes that are easy to understand and maintain, uh, how to use some features like overrides and some variables which are a bit mysterious to newcomers, uh, where to put distro machine and image settings, which is something that people tend to do uh, in the wrong place many times, uh, how to not use too many third party layers based on a cost benefit ratio evaluation. So if benefit is much more uh, than the, uh, the drawbacks, then it's probably to use, otherwise not. So overall to keep things simple. Uh, so the result is here. It's a repository which we published uh, a few hours ago on GitHub. So uh, let me uh, introduce you to, to this repository. It's called Simplest Yocto Setup. Um, and it contains, well, a, a pretty detailed readme uh, and the content of the repository is a cast configuration file, which doesn't contain a lot actually. So um, let me show you. Um, so uh, it downloads uh, Bitbake, it downloads Open Embedded Core, MetaArm, which is uh, useful to build TFA, otherwise it would be pretty complicated. Um, but it doesn't include any uh, system on chip or system on vendor uh, layers, which uh, in some cases are problematic. We want to, to show an example of how you can do things without. Uh, and it contains one single layer, which we've called meta kiss from the kiss principle, keep it simple, stupid. And uh, this layer in turn uh, contains uh, two uh, machines which mimic uh, some products. So the first product is the dog bone dark, which in the practice implement a big old bone black. And the other is the stomp dark, which in the practice implements the STM32 MP157 ADK1. And so uh, using it is uh, Simple, of course, uh, that's the goal. So if you don't have CAS, you install that, then you run CAS checkout to download the external components. You run the usual uh, init uh, env script, you build your image, and then you can use BMAP tool or or even DD to flash uh, it on, on the um, on an SD card and run it on one of those two uh, boards. So that's uh, all for, for the uh, basic usage. But what is more interesting is to look into the MetaKeys layer. Um, so uh, it's 
pretty uh, simple and minimal by intent. So it's uh, less than 350 lines, including the various comments we have put in to uh, clarify our decisions, our choices. Uh, of course, things can be done in different ways. One choice, for example, was to not use vendor layers. Uh, for the ST machine, for example, we have found the ST layer to have some issues um, and uh, trying to fix them was not really uh, working very well. So we prefer to uh, write a new machine description, taking from the, the front their own layer only what is really needed, which is not much. As you can see, it's 48 lines, including comments. And a good amount of lines is just to build a TFA, which requires quite some variables to be built. Um, but for the rest, it's pretty uh, normal uh, things you would find in a machine configuration. And um, so it is using uh, Linux keys as a, a kernel recipe and U-boot keys as a uh, U-boot recipe, which I'm going to show uh, in a moment. Uh, the other machine is the Dogbone Dark, which is actually implementing a Beaglebone Black. So uh, it is pretty much the same in spirit. Uh, it doesn't use TFA, so it's a bit shorter. Uh, there is also an include file showing uh, what is common between all machines uh, in our um, tissues uh, layer. And so, uh, for example, uh, we enable using WIC to uh, build an SD card image. We enable installing the kernel modules if they are built by the kernel configuration, etc. I'd like to show the Linux kernel uh, recipe. To build the mainline kernel, uh, you really only need like six or seven lines, uh, not counting comments. So license, you inherit the kernel and BB class, uh, where to find the, the, the source, I mean, which commit to use and the usual stuff. And there is a default configuration for uh, each board. We, we have chosen to write one per each board, which is a pretty uh, reasonable uh, decision for um, uh, a company making a product. Uh, the recipe uh, to build uh, U-Boot is uh, even simpler. Uh, it basically includes these two files from OECore, which implement all the logic. And then you just have to point to the uh, commit to, to fetch and the license checksum. Uh, there are a few appends specific to the ST machine and uh, to, to, to build it, to build, uh, and also to um, to, to uh, enable some logic that we chose to have for booting on this on this machine. And also, uh, well, uh, we have the weak um, Kickstarter files to create the SD cards. And there is one uh, recipe to build an application. Well, it's a simple game, but there is an example of a recipe. And of course, there is an image recipe, uh, which is super simple. It's just using core image and installing a couple application in addition to package group core boot. And uh, uh, yeah, and there's a distro conf, which is also pretty minimal. Uh, so we are enabling some distro features uh, you, you, mm, to, to act as an example of how you can um, you can use uh, you can create your own distro conf, which is pretty much recommended. So it's not recommended to use Pocky in production, but to write your own, uh, which scares people, but it's really really not that difficult. Uh, Okay, that's all. Uh, so uh, I hope that's interesting. Uh, you can have, go have a look and take some inspiration from this and um, hopefully have fun. Uh, I think I have maybe a couple of minutes for questions, Trevor. Uh, oh yeah, I mean, there's a break after, so we could always run into that. It's really just how long okay. you have. Uh, yeah, we have 21 minutes until the next talk. So if you wanna take any questions uh... yeah I, I see a few questions on the chat about um, using uh, kernel fragments or um, SCC files um, so well uh, in the spirit of keeping things simple uh, I'm in the practice uh, using a single monolithic def config file is maybe a bit less flexible but definitely much easier to understand uh, especially if you are not experienced and you don't need a lot of configurations and, and uh, different variants of your kernel um, so uh, of course there are lots of features which are not in use here uh, uh, some of them are because they are complex and so they are recommended if you have complex needs but not everybody does. Um, other um, other questions. Uh, 
this was from the previous talk, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't see okay. very much. Yeah. So there is a question about. Uh, there is some some specific. There are some specific non merged in mainline patches for Linux of TTFA in Meta ST STM 32MP. How did you get rid of that? Well, um, um, this thing is working on real hardware. So, uh, actually, uh, what is in Meta ST is partly not needed. We have actually one, um, One BB pen, which is probably interesting to show. Uh, well, we have two BB pens for TFA actually, so it's not really ST specific. Uh, but TFA uh, in, in version currently uh, on Kirkstone, uh, Meta Armor uh, does not build due to a uh, uh, issue with a version check. So you can get this error here, uh, which is a build error. Uh, so there is a patch from mainline, which we uh, backported here uh, to, to fix this problem. And uh, the other thing I needed to fix uh, in the TFA recipe is that uh, TFA um, depends, uh, does, well, well, it needs to depend on the bootloader, but it depends on uBoot on its own recipe. We have another uh, bootloader recipe. We have uBoot KISS, and so we needed to depend on virtual slash bootloader. I suspect this is a bug in the TFA recipe, so I have a note to uh, go uh, on their repository and see if it should be fixed there. Um, OK. Um, Luca, uh, yes? can you talk a little bit about uh, the company you worked with and how you sort of try to teach them you know, not just how to simplify things now, but how to keep things simple uh, as the, the years go by. Because obviously uh, they, they created they created a bit of a mess and you cleaned it up as far as I understand. And you're trying to show this as a, uh, a, a general role, but really it's about the people as much as the technology, right? So I'm not sure I got completely your question. So uh, it's about the, the uh, real example I gave I think it's about the, the company culture that allowed them to get to such a messy state of uh, being stuck on the kernel and having a, 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 you know, far too many layers and so on. This example here? Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, that's basically a, a company who uh, had this uh, setup, uh, let's say, inherited from a uh, a an external company uh, of their own. So uh, they, they, they got this from, from the outside and uh, then they, they they broke relationship with this company. So they ended up with this setup, which they were uh, not experienced to to even understand and, and, and clean up. So they came to us to uh, understand what to do with that. And so what we recommended was to, uh, instead of cleaning up everything manually and upgrading everything manually, it looked uh, much simpler and more efficient to just rewrite something simple from the beginning, which in turn uh, turned out to be working pretty well. Cool. Thanks. Okay, uh, that's all. I hope that was interesting. Uh, the the repository is out there. You can have a look. And uh, so, as Trevor mentioned, I will not be answering immediately on the chat. I will be looking in about one hour, one hour and a half. Uh, so I will be seeing if there are questions for me later on, and I will reply. Uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs>